Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this micro lecture is on Coulomb's law, um, that is electrostatic force, or the force between charges. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, so one to two sentence summary and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. All right, so we have things and they become charged, meaning they have a buildup of either positive or negative charge. And the way that happens is the same on the kind of atomic level as it is on the full like person or like molecular or any other level as well. So if something becomes electrically charged, it did one of two things. It either gained an electron to become negatively charged. So here we have a chlorine atom that has uh, 17 electrons and 17 protons, so it's neutral or zero charge. And in this case, if you add an electron, it would now have one extra electron than there are protons, and as a result would have a negative charge and becomes a negative chlorine ion. So things that are negatively charged almost always have gained an electron. Things that are positively charged have almost always lost an electron. Now I say almost always because there are cases where protons move around and stuff like that, but that only happens in science experiments um, and other like really high-powered uh, experiments, essentially at SLAC or CERN, the Large Hadron Collider, and things like that, or in a few other rare cases. But 99.9% .9 of the time that we'll ever talk about, things that are gaining charges are either, or sorry, gaining or losing charge are either gaining or losing electrons. So here we have a sodium ion, or sorry, sodium atom. It starts with 11 protons and 11 electrons. It loses one electron and becomes a sodium ion. And it's positive because it now has more protons than it does electrons. So like I said, this is true for things like atoms, but it's also true for molecules and big things like us. So if we are exhibiting a charge, in other words, we have become charged for some reason, electrically speaking, then the reason why that's happened is because we've either picked up extra electrons or we have gotten rid of some of our electrons, and uh, as a result, we have more protons than we have electrons. And that's really how it works, like I said, most of the time. There are a few exceptions, we just won't be talking about them. Now, once something is charged, there are two ways it interacts. One is if there's no charge, there's no force between things. The other is if you have like charges, so positive and positive, they would repel. If you have negative and negative, they would also repel since they are similar. But oppositely charged things attract. So if you have something that's positively charged and negatively charged, they'll actually be attracted towards each other, much like gravity kind of attracts, but for different reasons. Now, you could also look at how positive interacts with neutral things, but that's a talk for a later date. So beyond, also, or beyond looking at simply just does it attract or repel, we also can look at what is the actual amount of force. And we do that using Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law is the force between two charges, where Q is the charge measured in Coulombs. Uh, you have Q1 times Q2 times this constant, Coulomb's constant, and it's kind of like uh, the gravitational constant or like pi, it just kind of makes the equation work, divided by the distance squared or their separation squared. Now notice that this equation looks exactly identical to the gravitation equation, universal gravitation. The only difference is we deal with charges and this constant rather than the gravitational constant and mass. Uh, and so what that means is they're going to follow similar patterns. As always, you can remember that D can be used instead of R. But getting to the patterns, the pattern between force and charge is linear, much like the pattern between force and mass was linear. So what that means is uh, if you double one charge, then it doubles the amount of force. If you triple one charge, then it triples the amount of force. However, if you're doing um, increases to both charges, then that compounds. So it would multiply once for one of the charges and then multiply that again for the other charge. And the force between, um, or the force and distance is an inverse squared relationship, meaning if you have two charges and you double their distance, the force is now one fourth of what it originally was. And if you have two charges and you half their distance, the force is now four times what it originally was. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes. One to two sentence summary into your follow-up questions on Google Forms.